Well, hey, what's good, my fellow peasants? How are you all doing? I think it's fair to say that we all have a vested interest in Square Enix doing well and then making money. So we've got the results in. We've got the fiscal report and uh, let's check it out. So Square Enix announces positive financial results. Yes. Uh, of course, they'd always say that, though. They'd never announce that things were going down the shitter. But uh, they say thanks to 15 and Tomb Raider and more. So breaking this down, we've got the company and then we've got the gaming division. Now the company has made 190 billion yen revenue, 1.7 billion. Uh, now that is up from 152 billion yen. So they're up during the same period a year ago, from a year ago. Meanwhile, profit came in at 151 million dollars. Fuck all this yen nonsense. <laughs> and that is up from 120 million. So overall, the company is 24.4% up as a whole. And that's a 26% increase in profit. So solid, solid performance. 26% on a company already Square Enix's size. Wow. This is great news. This is great news going into 2017, what we're going to have on the table. Um, but going into the gaming division, see if what's going to be on the table is going to be good game shit. Good game stuff is going to be typed next. A Dope 7 remake was going down. So the gaming division, they have posted revenue of 146 billion yen. And that is up 32.7%. So that's interesting. That's the revenue. That's the total how much money is in this bad boy but the operation income declined falling 21.8 billion yen that's probably about two pound fifty um <laughs> i don't know how much that is but that's interesting and i kind of thought this would happen so of course fun fantasy 15 is a huge part of this for the gaming division um and i always knew that the cost of that game was going to be insane so high in fact that even if 15 did sell 6 million or 5 million in 24 hours, 6 to 7 million now, I knew that there was a real chance of operation income, which is essentially the profit, could still be lower. Now of course there are other games in there, there's Tomb Raider, there's Deus Ex, and I mean not all of that's 15, of course, not all of the development cost was done in 2016, but I need to get my hands on those operating costs for Final Fantasy 15. I need to get my hands on the marketing costs, the development costs, because that bad boy is going to be an insane number. I was talking to um, some peasants just the other day on this, and what do we include in the development costs of 15? We include a 10 year on and off development cycle where people were, this is the thing with uh, 15 and versus 13, someone was always working on it at some point. Even the two, three years where we didn't get any trailers, more or less. They were actually still working on it. And we have proof of that. So there was some serious money being leaked over 10 years. Then what do we include? We include the events like Uncovered. That bad boy must have been 2 million straight. Then, and this is the big whopper, besides a huge marketing campaign, building an entire luminous engine. I mean, you can put that, you can put that price tag on 15. There's also Kingsglaive. A full-blown, fully-fledged, the best CGI we have ever seen. Now, I'm saying that straight. I'm saying that flat. Best CGI quality movie ever made. I'm talking in terms of visuals. If you want to argue on whether it was the best story, go right ahead in the comments section below. Wage the war, peasants. But, yeah, so that's insane. The marketing costs, because that's essentially what 15 and Brotherhood was. It was marketing. So slap that price tag on there. Um, maybe they will. Maybe they'll include, you know, kind of consider them as individual endeavors and they won't put it onto the price tag of 15 but i highly think they will so the profit is slightly down but there's still a hell of a lot more sales to go with 15 um a lot of that has leaked into 2017 a hell of a lot so there's loads of money coming off the back end of 15 that isn't being tallied into this so that's really good news uh but overall square Enix console games earned more revenue and operating income compared to the same period however the company's mmo products were not as lucky so ff14 with net sales and operating income declining substantially and that is largely due to a halt in the expansion during that period so we've got it would have lulled it always does towards the end of an expansion that's really going to ramp back up so nothing to be scared of there and in regards to unit sales Square Enix saw a healthy year-to-year -year boost in every major territory. Every major territory. Are we including Japan? Because if so, how the fuck can you say that? 
honestly, I don't know how they can say that. We have the figures. Final Fantasy 15 just scraped over 1 million. Uh, 1 million units. Oh, I mean, that's just including to last year, I was going to say, because Japan, back when FF13 came out in 2010, that was a 1.7 million. But of course, this is just year to year. So it's surprising. Japan is still bought slightly more than last year. I'm <laughs> making a big zero of this breakdown. Um, especially in key Western markets of Europe and the US. Especially in Europe and US. So there we go, guys. That's it on the table. Every region saw better. But especially the West. And I said that in my last video. That even just as of this year. And with just this title, Final Fantasy XV. The West have snatched up a Square Enix and a Final Fantasy product. Like they have never snatched it up before. While it's Japan, they couldn't be fucked to go and buy a PS4. So fuck them. <laughs> the company sold 20.8 million units from April to December. Wow. In the same period the year before, only sold 10.56. So that's nearly double. So that is huge. That is nothing to sniff at. Further in the report, Square Enix mentioned that digital sales for back catalogue games were strong. Meanwhile, net sales and operating comes for smart devices. And PC increased significantly. So there it is on the table. That is how Square Enix are doing. And all in all, I'm not surprised. I could have preempted that. In fact, I wish I did a video doing my prediction, but you never know when these financial result reports are going to come out. So <laughs> I never know when to do them. But that's exactly what I would have preempted. Overall profit income on the gaming side, slightly down because there's been some bare investment right now. A lot is getting pumped into the 7 remake. So yeah, the back catalogue is really strong because they've been selling, they've been spending a hell of a lot to build that back catalogue. If we also include Kingdom Hearts, because holy hell, that is a check that Square Enix have been waiting a long time to cash in. So uh, we have a lot of KH. They've really been pumping that uh, the last year. And they've not seen the profit. They've not seen the financial fruition of that yet. So if KH is going to be a really big one. And as for the mobile games, they're really hard to judge. And I'll admit ignorance on this front. I really don't know typically how much things like Brave Exvius and Mobius cost them, or indeed how much profit they seem to make. So if anyone can clue me in on how it works on the mobile front, um, I know they certainly push the advertising. I haven't been able to look at, uh, there was about a period where a month, every single YouTube I had I saw was Brave Exvius. And the fact they've got Ariana Grande in, and just some of the marketing stunts they've pulled on those mobile games are huge. Um, and mobile, Mobius is coming to PC today, but, and this might be resolved by the time I post this video, only Korea are getting it for some reason. Square Enix are looking into it, but only Korea are getting it. So this is a terrible launch for Mobius on the PC. It's pissing a lot of people off. A lot of people are actually down thumbing the um, PC Steam port already just because of this issue. Uh, but yeah, if anyone can let me know on the mobile, that would be great. <laughs> so that's why I just want to do this video to let you know that all is gravy in the Navy. Never fear. We're going to be getting some real good games coming out of Square Enix if these financial results are anything to go by, which of course they are. Up 26% overall. Game sales up double. But most importantly, Square Enix are investing. Investing heavily into their gaming division and that is what we gamers want to hear and just to show you how much they are investing in the gaming division before we go i'll lead you to this other article uh dual shockers and this guy was super excited so somebody at dual shockers has seen a product they saw some visuals that blew their mind square enix they're experimenting on graphics using ff15 as a development environment which is of course what they're going to do they've got luminous engine they are going to flesh it out and uh yeah when i said that luminous should be a price tag for 15 that's not true this is an investment this is an asset for the company a huge one uh, that they're really going to use and this person has come out and more or less said that same thing um before i go on i have to warn you <laughs> well he says warm you i have to warm you <laughs> warm me um that a technical experiment made to see what, what can be done with the Luminous engine. But in order to run it properly, it needs a beefy PC powered by two Pascal GTX 1080 video cards running in SLI configuration. So that's why I don't get quite so exciting because this, excited because this person that says vegetation, draw distance, density detail, everything on screen that they saw appeared extremely vivid and lifelike. And considering I'm used to what games look like, for a moment it was difficult to believe 
that all the visual glitz was actually running in engine. It certainly looked like 15, but pushed to limits of graphical fidelity that I didn't even imagine while playing the game. And yet there it was, in front of my eyes. I don't use words stunning much, because as much as I love video games, I don't normally get stunned. But this time, I was seriously sat there, in front of the screen, with my mouth open, struggling for words. So yeah, this guy went in and had his mind <laughs> it's all over the, the Square Enix office walls. And yeah, like I said, the reason why I can't get so excited about that is because we already, we already knew this. We'd already seen um, uh, Agni's Philosophy, the Chapter Zero Witch trailer. We saw that running. We saw that pushing you know, 100 million polygons. And that was insane. But at the same time we're watching that, we know that there is a huge, beefy monstrosity of a computer behind it running it. 15 would have been beautiful if the PS4 could keep up with it, but it just simply couldn't. So, yeah, interesting to see what will come of this, to see um, what will come of Luminous Engine. Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't feel confident. I remember I said I think they should scale it back, go niche, bring it back a bit. Uh, it looks like they're going in the opposite direction. So, <laughs> ah! Let's just hope they can sort it out. Let's have faith. Um... That they'll work Luminous Engine into a condition where we can actually get a 40 hour story that is running up there. And it doesn't take six years to develop. But at this point, I think they're so their minds are so focused on the graphical game now and making Luminous work. So this could either be phenomenal for games. This could be incredible or this could be ominous. This could be an ominous sign that Square Enix are nowhere close to giving up that deck graphics game or that tech race. But there it is. Let me know what you think in the comment section below and uh, in the mortal words of Square Enix. Please be excited. Kupo.